All right, for a squeaking dryer, here's what needs to be replaced is this deal gets deformed and the little o-ring that's on the front i'll try to put a link for those so, in the description below but just a matter of changing those out and you don't really want to use any kind of lubricant it's better for it to be dry this one's a little deformed so i need to order a new one that's the story there on this dryer sometimes all it takes is popping it off and cleaning it up real good Okay, so for these, my preferred method is now just using the paper towels to clean off the bearing, clean the bearing, and then clean the post, and then also uh, clean this port here. Uh, in a pinch, oil can work. I've used oil before, or um, like Zoom Spout oil, uh, which is some great stuff, but actually um, this particular one, three months, six months later, actually leaked or, or squeaked. And so I wanted to show what I think is better is actually to clean all that out and have this bearing sit dry and just cleaning it off with a paper towel a lot of times that can fix it. If you need a new one you can replace the bearing and the o-ring but a lot of times you can actually just clean it up, shine it up with a paper towel and uh, not use any lubricant because it, the uh, deal just works better that way. But if you're really stuck and nothing else worked, you could, uh, in a pinch, use some Zoom Spout oil. But I think better to go without it because the dryer, you know, the dust and everything, uh, it can actually be attracted to the oil and, and uh, cause a squeak later on. So better to just clean it all out, and that's why I wanted to give an update. Uh, if you fa found one that you're cleaning out, uh, you might want to clean this small port also uh, to keep any squeaks away. Just wanted to give an update on that. Thanks for watching Kung Fu Maintenance. Over and out. Okay, so setting the deal back in. This has our belt. The belt goes around the dryer ribbed side down. Okay. There we go. We can use that to help lift it up. Okay. And insert our drum inside. And then that back one is going to go into the back deal. And then to hang it up. See if I can get a little more view back here. Not too sure there. We'll give it a shot, huh? All right. So using a glove, good idea. And what we're gonna do is hang the belt on the, in theory, hang it over the motor first. And then we'll get that around the first deal and then the pulley. So now I'm going to make sure it's centered so it'll pop up to where we want it and then pull the pulley around and I'm using my glove finger to guide this. This doesn't hit anything. Good. Okay. Now is the door. These little slides pop up. Okay. We've got to reconnect all our stuff here. Grab the door. Rest it on the ledge. Connect our Deal here. Right. Connect 
connect our quick connects. Not that easy with one hand, so there it is. Okay, and then this quick plug plugged in there. And now we've got to tilt the door so that the wheels can go up and into the two arms. Okay, hold that up, open the door, lift up the drum a bit. There we go. Okay. Alright. Now I've got these screws here. Got to insert this underneath. Uh oh. Uh oh. I think the screw came off in there. Where'd it go? Well, we'll get this side first. Okay. Oh, the screw's still there. I just can't see it because there's not much light. There's that side. Hey! Okay, now I'm going to turn my breaker back on. The easier way is to do, uh, turn the breaker off. And we're going to test this out. Yeah. No more squeak. Yay. All right. That's great. All right. So now we can set our plate on. on the bottom and then it's got the two screws one on each side on top all right i'm happy about this worked out good done deal There we go. All fixed. Done deal. It's definitely a good idea to wear gloves when servicing these. There's a lot of sharp parts, and especially when uh, taking the belt off or putting the belt back on, it's a good idea to have a glove at least on that hand that's threading the belt. A couple screws here hold this um, face trim on. Then you can pull the timer knob off.
and then you can lift up a little bit and pull to take the trim off. This has one screw on each side that holds the face plate in, but you'll want to turn the power off first. You can either unplug it or if it or turn the breaker off is your options to eliminate the power. You can hear the squeaking on this one getting progressively worse. Previously I showed you a, a different repair. Here I'm checking to see how difficult it is to get to the plug. And on this one I opted for turning off the breaker. Having the machine on when you turn it off lets you pretty easily identify that you've got it turned off. And then there's one screw on each side here. What this is is you don't want to loosen it too much. You just loosen it a little bit and then lift the screw up. It's on a slide that has a larger opening at the top to allow the captive screw to stay there and then you can pull the front forward to take the front panel off. It's very sharp. Box of knives. I know because I've uh, donated blood a few times. Here we go. You see how it um, can pull the bottom portion forward and then it's anchored in the top. And then uh, you've got your quick connects up top. You can leave the door switch connected and pull the quick connects. I showed this quite a bit uh, on my other video for um, loud grinding sound coming from a GE dryer where I went into this. This one a little bit different problem with this squeaking. This one's coming from the, the drum uh, post where it goes in. That's the squeaking on this one. And in order to get to this one, you actually have to take the whole drum out, which means you've got to um, take the belt off. Again, very sharp. Um, anytime I work on these dryers, I want to make sure I'm wearing long sleeve shirt. Everything is sharp and it's tight in there. A lot of stuff that can pinch your hands and pinch your arms. So there's the tension pulley. And there's the belt. And then here's that wheel I was telling you about. Pretty often source of noises. Had quite a few new ones where it did that and I uh, just had to loosen the bolt, slide the, the blower wheel back a little bit and then tighten the, the bolt back down. This one I'm trying to find a good position for you guys to give you guys a good view here of um, taking the belt off. What I usually try to do is um, move the pulley tension over a little bit and then grab both sides of the belt with, with one hand, squeeze and then lift it off the, the motor shaft lift the belt off. It's not always that easy because the drum is like in your way. <laughs> everything's kind of tricky. Like I said, everything's sharp, tricky, and tight quarters. That's how I remember it.
see if I can shed some light on the subject. And also I was trying to see if I could peek down there and see the the drum, the, the center post, that's where the shaft bearing is. And, you know, it'd be nice if you could see it easily, then you could drip some oil down on it, but it just doesn't really work out that way. I usually find it's, you gotta take it apart and get at it better. See, it's what it is. So by lifting up a little bit on the drum, definitely ease the tension to, to be able to remove the, the belt. Now we can take the whole drum out with the belt. And then we'll get a view of that bearing that's causing all the, all the noise on this one. You gotta be ready for the Lord's return. The Lord is gonna come for his bride anytime. Uh, Jesus came to seek and to save those that were lost. That was me. We've all missed the mark. Every person sinned and come short of the glory of God. But Jesus took the punishment that we rightfully deserve on himself at the cross and he gives his righteousness to those that believe on him. So if you haven't put your trust in him, call out to him to save you. It's a gift of salvation. You can't earn it. He did it all on the cross. And he calls us to a loving relationship with him. So you are invited to be reconciled to God. Something that was impossible. God is holy and our sin is separated. But without God, it was impossible. But God came to save us. He sent his son, Jesus. You know, again, he took all of our sin on the cross and uh, gave himself so that we could be justified in him. So call out to him get into the bible into the word and start to grow so that you're protected from deception there's strong delusions out there a strong deception and jesus is the way the truth and the life is the only way to the father he's the only way to god so don't don't get tripped up or tricked and don't don't miss out on what is yours through jesus now call out to him today don't wait the time is short he's going to return for his people and uh, if you missed it, and you find yourself in the tribulation, call out to Jesus to save you. Uh, you'll likely die for your faith, but still, like, you have eternal life. The tribulation only lasts seven years, so if you find yourself in part of it, you know, it's not going to be long before everything's finished anyway. Seven years is not a long time, although in the tribulation it's going to seem like a long time. but. Be faithful unto death. That means trusting in Jesus all the way. Um, there's probably not going to be a lot of food, um, and it's going to be a difficult situation. But uh, you, you can still have eternal life through Jesus, because again, He took all of our sin on Himself at the cross. So put your trust in Him today, so you don't miss out, and uh, so that you have the covering. Is He is the Lamb the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. All right, stay safe out there. God bless. God bless you. Mm -hmm.